Mrs. Baxter here. Today we're talking dividing decimal numbers. So we've been working on dividing decimals for a little while in our online school lessons. We are continuing that this week, dividing decimal numbers by decimals. So let's start off with a quick review of what we do when we have decimals in our division problem. So remember, the only decimal you see is under the house raise it to the roof. It just goes straight on up. If the decimal's on the side, you're going to slide, slide. We always want to be able to divide by a whole number. It's absolutely possible to divide with a decimal number outside the house, but it's really complicated to figure out where the decimal point goes in your final answer. If we slide the decimal point and we get a whole number outside the house, very easy to place that decimal point then in our final answer because it just goes straight up just like it does in a regular money division problem something that we're very familiar with the reason this is able to work is because we've learned you can multiply any number any decimal number or whole number by a power of 10. So we multiply by the same power of 10 outside the house and under the house, and that allows us to have a whole number outside. So when we slide, slide, we move the decimal point enough times that we get a whole number outside the house. So in this example here, we've got four tenths outside the house, we slide that decimal point just one time. By moving it once, we get the whole number four. Because we moved it one time outside the house, we also need to make sure we move it the same number of times under the house. So we move it one time to the right under the house as well. And in our final answer, that decimal point will just raise to the roof. It'll go straight on up and be right there um, above the line in our uh, final answer as well. So let's see this in action with a problem. Let's work through one together. In a factory, small juice packets are filled with 25 hundredths liters of juice. Today, the factory has 15 and 8 tenths liters of juice to pour into empty juice packets. How many juice packets can the factory fill completely today? So in this problem, kind of picture what's going on here. We're taking an amount of juice and we're dividing it into small portions for each of these little juice packets. So that's how I know, let me grab my pen again, that this number here, 15 and 8 tenths, is what is going to go under the house. This is what's being divided. So I'm going to write that out here, 15.8. And I'm dividing that by the amount of juice in each of those little packets, 25 hundredth. So I'm putting 25 hundredths along the outside. Because there's a decimal outside the house, I need to slide, slide, so that I can be dividing by a whole number. It will simplify things tremendously. So I see that if I move the decimal point one, two times, I'm going to get the whole number, 25 here. I know that whole numbers have this little almost invisible decimal point right next to it. So I moved two times outside the house. Under the house, I need to slide, slide two times as well. So I'm going to slide that one, two times. There's my little decimal point. I'm going to fill this empty spot with a zero. Since I was multiplying times powers of 10, remember this is like multiplying by 10 to the second power. Move it two times to the right. I'm going to fill any empty spots with a zero. Now what I like to do is erase all of the extra things now. To keep this a little bit more organized, I like to come in, I'm going to erase my little swoops, I'm going to erase my old decimal point. I'm even going to erase this zero because I don't need it anymore. This is the whole number 25. I'm going to do the same thing under the house as well. 
Bye bye to my little swoops. They were helpful and now they can get out of the way. Bye bye, old decimal point. Let's use what we have. So we have now, I'm going to extend this line, 1580 divided by 25. So I'm going to start here with my regular division algorithm. 25 cannot go into 15, but it can go into 158. So when trying to figure out how many times 25 goes into 158, I'm going to think like quarters. I know that four quarters or four sets of 25 would be 100, one dollar. So five quarters would be a dollar 25 or 125. Uh, that means six would give me 150. So that's close and without going over. So I'm going to say 25 goes into 158 six times because six times 25 equals 150. I'm going to subtract. I'm left with eight here and I bring down, bring down my next digit. That's a zero and I start that process all over again. 80 divided by 20 this time. Well, I know that 25 times 2 gets me to 50. 25 times 3 gets me to 75. That's closer. 25 times 4 would be too much. That would be 100. So I need to keep it here at 3. So 3 times 25 is 75. I subtract. I'm left with 5. And I still have a remainder, but I know that anytime I'm dividing with decimal numbers, I can keep going until I have no remainder at all. That's the awesome thing about decimals. You don't have to worry about remainders anymore. You don't have to write your remainder as a fraction. You can keep dividing by adding zeros to the end. So I know that I already have this little decimal point. He's hanging out there. Decimal point and then a zero. A decimal point super important. I have to make sure that decimal stays there. And I'm just going to raise it to the roof, raise it up because it needs to be in my answer. Now I've added my decimal point and my zero. I can bring this zero down and continue dividing. So now I have 50 divided by 25. And that works out nicely because I know that 25 times 2 is going to give me 50. So I subtract, I'm left with zero. Oh, it's squeezed in there. Zero is my remainder. Okay, once I have zero as my remainder, I know I'm done. Uh, I don't need to keep adding zeros to the end of the number to bring down more zeros because zeros at the end don't change the value at all. So I see 63 and 2 tenths as my quotient here. Now, the question they had asked me was, how many juice packets can the factory fill completely? My whole number is 63. That means there are 63 full juice boxes. And then there's two tenths of another that's just kind of hanging out here. It's not full, but there's a little bit there. So I'm going to write in my answer here, 63 juice packets we'll call them JP for short, can be filled completely. So that is one example of dividing by decimal numbers. Your online school loves to incorporate those models as well. If the model is not what speaks to you, use the algorithm. My preferred method for sure. If you're looking for additional help on those models, if they're just kind of stuck on you, come into Help Lab. We'd be happy to work with you on those. But happy dividing, folks. Have a wonderful week.